What's going on everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering. Smash like if you want a triple upload today. I'm up early, I'm on my third cup of coffee, and there's just a metric poop ton of information to talk about today. Also, in the pinned comment below, I'm going to leave a link to my gameplay channel called Midwestly, where I will be streaming Resident Evil 2 for PC tonight. I don't want to stream on the main channel because I know a lot of you don't like exactly watching gameplay. But if you want to check out gameplay, I've got stuff planned for Resident Evil 2, for Kingdom Hearts 3, and a lot of more, a lot more gameplay. So check that out. So this morning, big news. Big news out of EA. EA took a massive hit as Belgium takes another W in the battle against microtransactions. Now, if you'll remember, back in August, there was a lot of kerfuffle around 2K games, NBA 2K, taking a hit in the same market. Just to give you a brief amount of history. 2K, after begging people who used the game, which was really sad, had to make changes to their microtransaction systems to comply with Belgium and Dutch gambling laws, forcing 2K to remove some elements of the microtransactions from their basketball franchise, NBA 2K. According to Rock Paper Shotgun updated statements uh, on the basketball's arcade game website detail how the developer had to strip the option to buy my team packs, the NBA 2K equivalent of loot crates. You can see. They said here, their statement. Remember that they would say, the Belgium G Gaming Commission has stated that games that which include certain loot box style mechanics violate gambling laws in ben Belgium. While we disagree with this position, we are working to comply with the BGC's current interpretation of these laws. As a result, we made some local changes to the MyT mode. These changes are necessary in order for us to accommodate the BGC's interpretation. Now, if you're wondering why do why does the beard seem so happy this morning? Well, could be the massive injection of caffeine, but also you've got to understand companies like 2K and EA for a sports game fan in this case have absolutely stagnated at innovating these games, spending what I would have to guess 80% of their time on the economy of the game and just 20% of their time trying to innovate, essentially giving us little tiny upgrades every year, but really refining their abusive microtransactions and auction houses and things like that. This morning, Electronic Arts also had to surrender. By the way, this is on Forbes.com. 56 views. <laughs> Smash like if we're bigger than Forbes. EA surrenders in Belgium. Uh, FIFA Ultimate Team loot box fight, raising potential red flags. Now, this is going to be from an investor standpoint, but from a player standpoint, stick around, and I'm going to explain why this is still a very good thing for us. After Belgium declared the loot boxes and video games constituted unregulated gambling, many companies who employed this practice, like Blizzard and Valve, were quick to eliminate their sale in the country. But EA took a public stand against the ruling, imagine my shock, and was going to take the issue to court. That has now changed. EA, speaking after two Belgian authorities, has agreed to follow the other games, specifically to stop selling FIFA points, which can be in turn used to buy loot boxes or player packs. Players will still be able to earn them in-game. Wow! They just can't be bought with currency being sold for real money. EA came out with a statement about the decision this week. We seek to bring choice, fairness, and value to, and fun. Notice how they put fun last to our players in all of our games. In addition to providing players options in how they play, we want to include pack probabilities in our games for transparency. Players want to make informed content choices. While we, ta while we are taking this action, we do not agree with the Belgian authorities interpretation of the law. Interesting, they use the exact same language as 2K. We will continue to seek more clarity on the matter as we go forward. The impact of this change to FIFA Ultimate Team in Belgium is not material to our financial performance. Oh, really? Let's see how the market's reacting. Bum, 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 bum. The market's only been open for 30 minutes and your stock is plummeting. Uh, well, it looks like a little mini recovery, still down two and a quarter percent or 2.42% total. 
down two points. And what you're talking about here is probably hundreds of millions of dollars in just these two points in a year in which electronic arts has brutal been brutalized by the market, been brutalized by the market. Look at this in the last six months, as high as one hundred and thirty one dollars and today eighty eight dollars, almost half of what it was earlier in the year. Now, why is this important? Yes, this is great for the FIFA community. OK, however, I'm going to explain why I don't why I'm taking joy in this, not just because I hate EA, OK, but because of what this potentially means for the gaming community. Again, EA will no longer sell FIFA points in Belgium after the country's gaming authority declared loot boxes illegal. It was ruled that loot boxes were games of chance and thus the breach of these countries' gambling laws. Other publishers like Blizzard and 2K chose to amend their loot boxes. EA has refused until now, until finally getting the writing on the wall, taking their licks. Here's why this is important. Belgium, in my opinion, is just the start. Now, I wouldn't expect this to move over to the United States very soon, but I would expect this to spider out in Europe, uh, following other countries who uh, other countries that are a little less corporately involved, I guess is the word I would put it in. Uh, in the U.S., I would expect to see these things, if any change at all is made, uh, I expect them to be regulated, not forbidden, because I mean the tax revenue is just too much in the United States, and I just couldn't see them outlawing them outright, but. What this is, is a huge win for the gaming community. And I sincerely hope that other countries in Europe will follow suit. Why? Because it will force innovation back into the game. EA will have to hopefully spend time making their games great again, uh, as opposed to relying on making money after the fact. Now, you could argue that this will just lead to an increase in price in video games. That would be an absolute negative outcome of this. You could see a EA come back around and say, well, loot boxes were an vital port, uh, vital imp uh, part of our video games, which will now be $89.99 to offset that. However, in the free market, I don't think you would see other gaming companies follow suit. Although, who knows? I would hope they don't. Um, the idea, the reason that I believe the reason I so strongly oppose loot boxes is simple. When you have a game that is so clearly built around them, like, for example, Battlefront 2, like, for example, any sports game put out by EA, like, for example, we might see an anthem, which I'm going to cover in my one o'clock video today, some conspiracy theories going on there that might have a bit of truth to them. The reason I hate them is because these microtransactions are added into games that are already sold at full price. They're already sold for 60 or 80 or $100, depending on which version you bought, and they still have to rely on microtransactions, predatory ones, in my opinion. While I suppose I'm okay with cosmetics only, that doesn't mean I can't call out when they're absurd, i.e. a $20 skin, which we'll talk about in the one o'clock video. Make sure you have your notifications turned on. So my question to you, do you see this spreading in Europe? And if it does, what do you think will happen to the gaming industry? Will you see EA finally figure out that they have to put out good games? Will you see uh, massive restructures? Because let's be honest, the financial market is clearly not reacting well, and it's only it's only been open for an hour. So the people that invest in EA and these companies clearly do so for their microtransaction revenue. Okay, so when they lose the investors, you will see restructures, reorgs at the top. How will they generate this revenue? Will they come out with more absurd special editions? Will you see more BS like software as a service where they're parting out software and they're really getting 80, 90, $120 from players? Will you see a more focus on season pass? How will EA make up this money? I'm nervous because I don't think it will be good uh, necessarily. I'm hopeful that this will push them to make their games better. And again, I'm not against DLC. 
as long as it's good. Why don't these companies focus on good DLC, give us a complete game, and then give us a reason to buy their DLC? I don't think it's unreasonable if I pay $60 for a game, if they offer... Look, if Red Dead Redemption 2, okay, came out with a gigantic content patch, a whole new section, and it was 20 bucks, but it offered me another 30, 40 hours of gameplay, no problem with it. The problem happens when you strip it out of the original, okay? What happened to doing that? What happened to real add-ons for money? I'm okay with that, as long as they're not stripped out of the original version. I would like to see companies spend more time on that, but I'm curious what you have to say in the comment section down below. We'll see you again later today around 1 o'clock for a second video and probably 4 o'clock central for a third. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.